Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to have all of you here again and it's good to talk to all of you. Now before I get started with anything, uh, just one thing. If you are potentially epileptic and you will see some flashing stuff and will have a seizure, please stop now and don't continue because there will be a bunch of things that are going to flash by. So stop now. Alright, so what is this actual episode about? Well this episode is about you know what it takes for me to actually make a Know Your Ship episode. Now, some of you have asked me to do this sort of before, and what I did is I actually did this on stream. So I did it live on Twitch, and this entire thing on Twitch would have been four hours. Now, initially, I was thinking about uploading the entire thing, sort of, from beginning to end, except I went ahead and I derped really, really hard. So now you guys kind of sort of live with a condensed version. What I did was I uh, I screwed up. I, I missed like an hour chunk in the middle there. And then I thought I had everything, deleted the thing from Twitch, and then I realized I missed something. So anyway, so in this particular case, what I started to do at the very beginning is I first browsed through every sort of thing I did, uh, saw all the ships I already made in episode four, and then decided what I was going to do this next episode on, which for me was going to be the Fabuki. And so what I started doing is... I went through um, sort of a starting uh, book, a very, very simple book that had mostly sort of just the technical information, displacement, dimensions, machinery, how fast the ship went, what the armament was, uh, you know, the complement in terms of crew, as well as some basic information about the ship itself. So that's always the beginning. So I always go ahead and I collect all this information. Now, while I'm collecting this information, what I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to try to sort of pay attention to what I'm looking at and what the numbers are going to be, because I'm also going to try to make sure that even though I get information out of one book, that it's confirmed somewhere else. Also, in certain situations, if there is um, like a certain claim made in a book, I will try to verify it. So, for example, in this first book that I looked at, which is Conway's All the World's Fighting Ships from 1922 to 1946, the Fubukis were essentially termed as the most powerful destroyers of their time, for example. So, after collecting all the data on the Fubukis, I would go ahead and I would look up all the comparable destroyers from roughly around the same time to see if, for example, that claim holds up, in which case... In this case, it actually does sort of hold up as I go through the destroyers from Great Britain, from the U.S., from Germany, from France, from Italy, and I look at it and I go, okay, so I see that the claim that is made is actually somewhat valid. Great, and of course, you know, I'm also going to take down the information for these other nations' ships as well, just so I can have a reference point and some sort of comparison. In which case, eventually, I found out that, for example, that the French had destroyers that were probably the most comparable, but the French destroyers were uh, actually incredibly large. They were probably some of the biggest destroyers of their time. I also found out that, for example, some countries preferred faster destroyers at the expense of lighter armament. You know, the Italians, for example, um, very, very fast ships, but very light armament. So anyways, I collect this basic information at the beginning, and I feel like, okay, at the end of this, I've got a grasp on that particular thing that I was looking at. The Fubukis are, at the time of their construction, the strongest destroyers in the world, or at least among the strongest destroyers in the world. Okay, so that for me checks off that box, and I go, okay. Then I try to look up other sources. I look at other books to see if I can get things to match up. Now, what's going to happen is I'll open other books, look at other books, and I'll see if I can find other tidbits of information. So in which case, um, for example, in this book, uh, it mentions where the special type destroyer name came from and whether that was an official name or whether it was just something that was popularly referred to and so on and so forth. So I found that piece of information. Also, initially, as I was looking at the first batch of information, I started to make, you know, I started to have questions about certain things. For example, the uh, first two sets of Fubuki destroyers had four boilers. By the time the last set was done, they had only three. So, you know, what happened there? Did the, you know, did the boilers become more efficient? Did they become more powerful? So I had to answer those questions as I went along. And in this case, another book answered it as yes. When they got to the last set of destroyers, the boilers uh, went from four to three. And, you know, that was because the boilers became more powerful. And also this had this effect on the appearance of the ship as maybe the funnel changed shapes and things like that. So... You know, it's it's taking sort of different pieces of information, trying to piece it together into a cohesive account of the, the entire development sort of of the ship. 
Again, there's going to be things that are interesting as well. For example, you know, one of the Fabukis happened to have been involved with a famous U.S. president, for example. So that was something as well. Then, after sort of the basic things are done and some of the, you know, the the ship's you know technical information just for the ship itself has been collected, then I will move on to things like, for example, the weapons. You know, what kind of weapons were on these ships, and what was the performance of these weapons? You know, what kind of shells they fire? How big were the shells? How far would they go? So in the case of the Fubuki, I'm looking up the five-inch、uh, guns that it had. Did the mounts change from one ship to another? So in the Fubuki's case, for example, I found out that the mounts did change from the first batch of Fubukis to the second batch. They actually changed the mounts, and the guns went from single purpose to dual purpose, for example, things like that.、Um, also, you know, all the secondary guns or the little guns, the you know, the anti-aircraft guns. Have to find out all of those、uh, informations as well. So in this particular case,、uh, the Fubuki's carry 25 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. Okay, so、uh, what kind of shells do those fire? What's the effective rate of fire? Are they effective at actually shooting down aircraft? You know,、uh, they have torpedoes. Well, the Fubuki's had two kinds of torpedoes. What was the difference? How are they different? How do they compare potentially to other nations? So on and so forth. And so there's a lot of this sort of. Initial research that has to be done every time I want to make an episode, and a lot of times as well, is you have information that might contradict each other. So, some of the other things as you go along, you find out, hey, wait a minute,、um, the Fubuki's listed design speed, well, doesn't seem that accurate because you read a different source and you go, oh, okay, so. It seems like that while the first design was for a ship that went 38 knots, when they were finally built, they didn't have that speed at all. So you look at that and you go, "Hmm, okay, maybe there's something that I missed there, or maybe there's something that one of the books had written that was incorrect." So, for example, the Conway book stated that the Fubuki's went 38 knots, which I found out was not the case. So you know you have to make adjustments like that. Also. Sometimes you'll re- like read some stuff, and then you'll have to make connections as well. So, for example,、uh, one of the things that appeared was that、um, the naval treaty that was signed between Great Britain and Japan had ended, and it might not seem like much when you're just reading it. But for example, I happen to know that at the same time, in sort of the 1920s. Great Britain's major concern was actually with the United States, and so there's a potential there that.、Um, Great Britain wanted to avoid conflict with, like, the U.S., and so therefore didn't want to be involved in some sort of naval alliance with Japan, who viewed the U.S. as its primary enemy. Right? So, you know, there's all these things that you have to sort of tie together to make sure that things are what you say they are going to be. You know, when you actually make the video, and then later on, well, then we ran into a bit of a, a little glitch, shall we say? And that's that that happened when, you know. I, I was reading something and it said, "Okay, the Fubuki had no torpedo reloads." And then I read somewhere else in another book that the Fubuki carried a reload for every one of its torpedo tubes. And then things start to get really crazy because you, you read multiple sources and the numbers of reloads change. So eventually, we had everything from no reloads to only reloads for you know one torpedo launcher to.、Uh, Reloads for two torpedo launchers to reloads for like all the torpedo launchers. So, you know, then you have a conundrum like that, and you're really having to figure it out. And so that ends up taking a lot of time. So, for example,、um, I start to have to look at okay, did the Fubuki's have a reload mechanism? Is there anything on the ship that indicates that these torpedoes can actually be reloaded? So you start to look, and you start to try to, you know, read all sorts of things. Whether it is like, you know, people who build models, or whether it is, you know, actual books and and various things, and you'll find all sorts of answers because apparently this is kind of one of those mysteries, and you kind of have to unravel it. So what you know, I, what we ended up looking at, I mean, still didn't convince me fully that the answer was correct, but.、Um, At the time I was doing this on Twitch, somebody had sent me、uh, a picture. I mean, I was reading like first-hand accounts of. In this case, this was a first-hand account of somebody who developed like a whole new、um, torpedo doctrine for the Japanese Navy. And so I was seeing whether or not there was any reference in a first-person account that their destroyers had torpedoes. There were, but it wasn't specific to the Fubuki. So it's like, ah,、oh, that didn't really do it, right? So 
Eventually, as we kept looking and looking and looking, uh, somebody found like a diagram in a book, and they found this diagram in the book, and this diagram showed that there were uh, supposedly like a reload in you know the, the right here. There's a, a a reload mechanism, and they're like there's these torpedo lockers there with the reloads, and so you're looking at it and you're like, you know, I see the diagram. It's the only diagram I've seen so far that shows it accurately. Does it show up on the ship anywhere? So. You really start looking. You start to look at the ship, and you start to notice that in the little diagram there was something called rails, and there's like there's a rail there. So then you take a look at all the pictures that you can find of the ship to see if is there a rail? Does you know does it look like there's a rail there? And so there's a, there's a whole interesting process that goes on here, and you know in this particular case I was scouring Google Images trying to find as many pictures of the actual ship as possible to see if any one of them showed. The rails. I was just like, oh my god, I can't find any because they were all sort of these side shots, and you could kind of see maybe a little glimpse of things, but you know, you saw it on the models, but you just didn't see it on the historical pictures, and maybe the models are wrong, right? So you you got to make sure that the information you present would end up being correct. So you know, as you can tell, here I am looking through a bunch of pictures, and eventually I look at it and I go. It looks reasonable. There's a thing there that kind of looks like a structure that you can maybe store a torpedo reload in. Still not a hundred percent because the rail wasn't clearly there, right? But you know, you then you look at other ships, other Japanese destroyers that did have confirmed reloads. So, for example, like the Kagero, and you saw the Kagero had reloads and it had the rails as well. So. You look at the Fubuki and going, okay, if I can find a rail, then maybe this is going to confirm it. And eventually, somebody found this one picture of,、uh, like I think it was like a U.S. aircraft overflying a Japanese destroyer. And I saw the picture and I went, that looks like there's those rails very clearly marked on these ships. So in this particular case, looked there and said, all right, there it is. These Fubukis have the ability to reload their torpedoes. Right, and then of course you also take a look at, for example, World of Warships, and take a look at their models and see did they model it in. And in this case, if you look at a Fubuki carefully, their rails are clearly modeled in there. So therefore, reasonable, you know, conclusion is that the Fubukis could reload their torpedoes. So approximately, you know, four and a half hours or so later, you know, I finally hit,、uh, you know, a reasonable amount of information about the ship itself, and you know, there's still more to do. I still have to do the entire career histories of these ships. Anyways, folks, I mean, I hope you enjoyed, you know, seeing how I go about making these episodes. And、uh, you know, if you've got any questions about, you know, anything, or you can contribute something to maybe my search for information on the Fubukis, do let me know in the comment section below. Aside from that, you guys all take care. Have a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.